Dental implants are an investment. And I get asked a lot, Nick, how do I afford to pay for dental implants? I don't just have that money laying around. Well, most people are going to have to save up or get creative on how to finance for dental implants. And I'm Nick Hanson. Today, we're gonna to get to the point on paying for dental implants. If you're like most people, you've been shopping around for dental implants for quite some time and you've been trying to find that best provider for you. And you finally found that provider and you're excited about the treatment plan and you're ready to get those teeth, but now you gotta figure out how to come up with the money so that you can move forward with the, the treatment plan. There are significant purchases that we have to make in life and a lot of people do reference buying dental implants like going out and shopping for a car. And I don't like that reference because it's completely different. However, they do feel like, you know, payment wise and, and the cost is sometimes equivalent. And it depends on people are looking at new cars, used cars, uh, luxury cars. There's a bunch of different things out there, but cars are the second most expensive thing that people buy, but they don't last very long. And people always say, I'm going to go buy this awesome car. I'm going to keep it for a really long time and I'm going to drive it so the wheels fall off and they get that 72 month loan, which is six years, and they pay it off and they're like, you know what? I'm starting to get that itch again. I think I need to go get a new car. So the average amount of time that somebody keeps a new car is actually only six and a half years, but it's the second most expensive purchase that people make and they only keep it for six and a half years. And when they buy a used car, it's only five and a half years. So we've been conditioned to go out and continue to get new cars or used cars and continue to turn them over and keep making those payments. So that's one way that we can kind of afford to pay for dental implants. We can keep our cars a little bit longer than that six and a half or five and a half years. Sometimes I get people that come in and they're like, I was just about to buy a car. I'm glad I came in before I bought that car so I don't take on another monthly payment. But if you think about it and how much you use that car as opposed to how much you use your teeth, so the typical person drives 15,000 miles a year. When you break it down using an average of 60 miles per hour that you drive, you break it down, it's only 250 hours a year. That's all you're using your car, 250 hours a year. But with your teeth, you are going to be using them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. To me, that's a much better investment than something that I'm only gonna use 250 hours a year on. So a lot of people are looking for, how am I gonna pay for this upfront? But another way to look at it is getting the money on the back end as well through tax deductions. And I'm not your financial advisor or an accountant, so make sure you speak to an accountant or a financial advisor about this. But as of filming this video, the calculation used by the IRS is seven and a half percent of adjusted gross income. So when you do your tax return, if your adjusted gross income on the bottom line on the first page is $40,000, then you can write off anything over $3,000. So you take the adjusted gross income number, multiply that by seven and a half percent, and you get that number. So anything you spend on medical bills, including dental implants, can be written off on your tax return. That's gonna give you some money back that helps pay for dental implants. Okay, my favorite way to pay for dental implants is through credit cards. And you know why? I love credit card points. Because when I think of credit card points, I think of traveling. And I've had patients come in that have put it on their airline credit card and then they flew to Hawaii afterwards. So that to me, I love credit card points and that is by far the best way. But you don't want to have a credit card bill that's so high that you can't pay it off because the interest rate on credit cards are gonna be very high. Another option that people like to do is they like to plan and figure out what their treatment plan is and then save up the money. And then they're able to come back and either pay cash or check and not have to worry about a monthly payment. But for a lot of people that would take a really long time and they're in dire need of dental implant treatment ASAP. So that's not for everybody. A lot of people, if you have an infection or missing teeth and you need something right away, we do need to look at other things. So another option would be to look at financing. And there's lots of different financing available to patients. Uh, they can either go to their bank or they can look at their provider. 
So a lot of providers are going to have internal financing that they use with a third party. And those third party rates are gonna vary tremendously. So you need to look at what that is. If you have excellent credit, you can get better interest rates. Now there's there's other lenders out there like uh, that, that are gonna be the same regardless of what your credit score is. And those might be good for patients that are in the you know, uh, low sixes up to 700. But once you get above a 700 credit score, it's better to look for something with a better interest rate. A lot of these financial providers that work with all these different medical providers offer different plans. Some of them might be where they're really short term, but there's no interest. And so that works for people that can afford a very large payment. That's not for very many people because its payments are super high. A lot of times if they're able to afford those monthly payments that are that high, a lot of times they're able to save up the money and pay cash. But for the majority of people, they pick an extended plan. And an extended plan can go all the way up to what I've seen is 90 months, which is seven and a half years. And that's what the majority of patients do go with because seven and a half years does give them a small enough payment to be able to pay for this over time. One of my favorite ways to pay for medical bills is through a health savings account, also known as an HSA. HSAs are great because you don't pay tax on the money that you put into it every year. So you get to put the money in tax-free and then you get to use it for medical bills tax-free. So you can make money during that time before you use it. So you can put it into a savings account and just accrue interest, or you can even invest that money into the stock market and make money in bonds or stocks and by investing it, and then you get to pull it out tax-free. There's another one called an FSA, Flex Spending Account. FSAs are okay, but they're not as good as the HSA. And the reason is the HSA, you get to keep every year to year and roll that money over. With an FSA, you have to use that money by the end of the year or you lose it. So it's great if you know you have something coming up, but you don't wanna let that money expire in your account. Another way that people are able to pay the least amount of interest and be able to afford dental implants is through a 401k loan. So if you've been with your employer for a really long time, you've been putting into a 401k and you've amassed en en enough money in there to where you can borrow from it, that's a great option because with a 401k loan, you don't pay any interest to anybody else. Now there's gonna be a set interest rate, but you're paying that back to yourself. And a lot of times there's just a small nominal fee around $100 that you pay to the administrator. But other than that, there's no fees, no interest that you're paying to take this money out and you just borrow that money and pay it back with interest. Now, over the years, people have seen their home prices soar through the roof and they've been able to use the home as collateral to get a low interest rate loan. And so we see that a lot of times where people go get a cash out uh, refinance or a home equity loan or line of credit on their home because they have that collateral. Anytime you use a provider's loan or a bank signature loan, a lot of times those are going to be with no collateral. So the interest rates are going to be much higher. But when you use a home as an asset for collateral, or you can use your RV or your car and you can get a loan against that collateral, you'll be able to get a lower interest rate. I've seen many different creative ways that people have been able to come up with the funds for dental implants. And maybe it's they don't have a good credit score. So they've gone out and talked to their family and friends and the family and friends are able to give them a loan so they can pay them back directly. But there's more creative ways than that. And the most creative way I've ever seen was somebody went home, they're like, all right, I need to do this, I wanna do this, I'm gonna figure it out. So they went around their house and figured out what they had that they could sell to be able to pay for dental implants. So is it a garage sale? Maybe, but this person actually had a sword from the Battle of the Alamo that was passed down generation to generation, and they were able to sell that sword to a collector and pay for dental implants. I hope that this video helped keep you motivated about the treatment plan that you decided to move forward with and that you're able to now think of different ways to come up with the financing to do it. I'm Nick Hansen. Today we got to the point on how to finance dental implants.